you guys would just lift those hands. We're going to go ahead and open up tonight with a word of prayer, as always, inviting the presence of God into the house. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this service. We thank you for what you're going to do, Father God, because we're expectant. No matter how you take us, Father God, in this, in this service, no matter which way we go, and no matter what you want to do, Father God, I pray that we will be obedient, we will open our hearts and our minds and our ears to whatever you would have us to do tonight. Because this isn't our service, God. This isn't our worship. This isn't anything of our own doing. This is all for you, Father God. This is everything by you, for you, and through you, and you would deserve it of everything. So, Father God, as we lift our hands, and as we begin to lift our voices, Father God, we invite your presence in tonight. That even though we're few in numbers, Father God, your presence is still here. We abide in you, Father God. We are expecting tonight. Thank you for your presence, Father God. We thank you for your presence, Father God. We thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus, we ask you in. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. amen.
take every opportunity to engage our God. Lately, Pastor Veronica and I have been reading that so many churches have started to get away from the services that allow God to just really minister to His people. It's this rush in, rush out. It's a part of our society now. We, we rush in, we rush out. We have drive through this, drive through that. And it's all about how fast can we get in and get the blessing and get out. But let me tell you something. I believe that our God deserves more. He deserves more than just a quick fleeting moment come on am I talking to anybody and I don't know about you but I'm I'm willing to wait I'm willing to forget the clock and the time and I'm willing to just say Lord you have your way you see because we didn't come here for a quick service come on we, we didn't come we didn't come here just to get in and out you came because Many of you are burdened. Many of you are weighted down. Many of you are dealing with things in your life. Struggles, trials, storms. I mean, we need to be honest about life. Life is life. Life is hard. But we come, we come to the well of His presence to drink that we might be refreshed and strengthened and renewed and leave with new purpose new desire I want you to place your hand look around you find somebody next to you put your hand on their shoulder you may or may not know them just place your hand on their shoulder come on there's a reason for what we're doing just, just place your hand on somebody's shoulder And I want you to pray for just 30 seconds. And the worship team is going to go into another song. But I want you to just pray for 30 seconds. And your prayer for that person, it's not for you, it's for that person, is, Lord, don't let this person miss out. Don't let them miss you. If you're passing by, Lord, let them, let them know that you are passing by. Let them know that you are right there. And let them receive of you. And that's all you got to do is just pray for 30 seconds. And then we're gonna, I'm going to have the worship team do this song. 
I love this song. And we're going to ask God's presence right now. Come on, worship team. And I want you to know this altar's open. So when you're done praying for that person, you can come up to the altar if you'd like. When you're done praying, you can you can come on up and pray if you want. Come to the altar. Listen to the words of this song as the Lord sings this over you. singing over you right now. and praise him. Come on, here we go.
And here's the blessing of the Lord. Father, your word declares that every good and every perfect gift comes from you. You're the God that gives good gifts to your children. And I want you to know tonight that it's his desire to bless you. It's his will to bless you. His word declares that all the blessings and promises are yes and amen in Christ. That means God wants to bless you tonight. Just lift your hands and receive it right now in Jesus' name. Father, these are your people. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing, Father God, fill each and every person. Right where they're at, all over this sanctuary, Father God, let your anointing just saturate. Let your anointing refresh. Heal bodies, Father God. Heal minds. Restore marriages. Father God, give hope to those that feel they have no hope, Father. Increase their faith. Let them see, Father, your hand of blessing in their life. Oh, what an awesome presence that is in this house. What an awesome presence that's in this house. Lord, thank you for blessing your people. Thank you for blessing your children. In Jesus' name. Come on, can you can you give God praise tonight? Can you give God praise tonight? Come on. His presence is here on a Wednesday night. God is doing things on a Wednesday night. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we get out of the house lights, you're standing. I want you to find somebody you've never seen before. Come on, get out of your seat. I want you to go and say hello. I want you to welcome them to the house of God. Come on, folks, look around you. can find your seat tonight we're going to hit the lights we have a short welcome video
Amen. Praise God. First time guests. Come on, do we have any first time guests here? Wave at us so we can give you a big, big, big welcome. Come on, Word of Life Ministries, welcome our guests. We hope that you've stopped by the uh, Welcome Center to get your gift. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to turn this over to Josh here in a second to go over just a couple few quick announcements. Um, but we want to we want to make sure that we remind you, parents, um, we are we are changing some things up in our children's ministry, our preteens. Amen. Come on, give God praise. That's an awesome thing. And so we are trying to get parents. Do we have any parents that take your kids to children's church? Children's okay. We we need you to start working at trying to get so, your children signed up before service. Okay. Um, even during worship, you can go and get them signed in um, because we're doing some new security measures and we're, we're signing in the kids through computer. And so it's taking a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer process. So we're trying to get the parents to start signing up your kids, get to church uh, even a little bit earlier and go in and make sure you get them signed up and everything is going to flow a lot better. But we're going to start making this announcement for the next several weeks so that we can get everybody on board uh, with what we're doing in children's ministry. Amen. I'm going to pass this over to Brother Josh. Word of Life Ministries, how are you this evening? Welcome, welcome. If you guys would pull out your bulletins really, really quick, we do have some special announcements. Uh, coming up this week and actually at the end of this week, discipleship meeting that has been moved to this coming Monday, February 25th at 7 p.m. So for those of you who are part of the discipleship class and finished that last course and that were there at that last class attending at that last service that we had, you guys are invited to that February 25th at 7 p.m. meeting. Please do not miss it for disciples only, all right? For SOS Women's Ministry, where are the women at? They're scary, but they're they're awesome when they <laughs> but they're awesome when they come together. Okay, uh, to be respected, uh, they will be having a special service this Friday, the twenty second at seven p.m. The special speaker will be Laura Mitchell, author of Success Unshackled. It's an awesome, awesome opportunity for you ladies. Invite a friend, uh, come out to this service again. That is at seven p.m. this Friday. Okay ministry meeting there is going to be a meeting for those who lead or teach in a ministry wednesday february 27th at 6 p.m in the multi-purpose room that is next week so leaders ministry leaders make that a note in your calendar to be there right after or i'm sorry right before service okay and last but not least right there at the bottom uh, right corner meet the pastor's dinner okay and this is i'm going to read this so that way we get all the information out have you been attending uh word of life ministries for the past three months and are you considering becoming a member pastors randy and veronica would like to invite you to join them for dinner on march 8th at 6 30 p.m in the multi-purpose room if you folks are interested it's a great opportunity please send us your uh information right there at the bottom of your name your phone number and the number of people attending by march 3rd to that email address there at the bottom of your bulletin all right we want to welcome all our guests and all our all our new faces to the family and this is a great opportunity to meet the pastors and get to know them a little bit more amen and without further ado we are going to turn it to brother randy for the offering thank you guys real, real quick we want to um um see if there's any men that can come and help with security on friday um, just having a few extra men that can come out. There's going to be a lot of women here. And so um, just just to have some security, if you are interested in help, helping, please see me right after the service. Amen? Somebody lost a bracelet, was found out in the parking lot. It's got uh, 24 karat gold and rhinestone. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's it's just a little a little bracelet that somebody made. Um, so if, if this is yours, just see me after the service. Amen. Will you all stand with me, please, as we pray for the offering? How many of you know that God is real? He is very real, very alive. And, and what, why we come here on Wednesdays and Sundays is because we have a relationship or we're desiring to have a relationship. When we give, it's about being obedient. And, um, and when you give, you give cheerfully because you know that God got your back. He does. 
He's going to provide your every need, no matter what it is. So you don't have to worry. If he's telling you to put something in the, in the basket, do it and uh, see what he does. You know, don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't worry about what's going on in your life. He will provide for you. Amen. Let's lift it up. It's a seed. It's going to grow. The Lord may bless you some other way. You never know how he's going to give it back. But he will give it back. Dear Heavenly Father, as we glorify your name in our giving, Lord, we, we thank you for putting in everyone's heart, Heavenly Father, to give something, whether it's $1 or $100. Lord, we know that you are faithful in everything that you do, and your word is true, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your giving. Go and bring your offering forward. Children, nursery are dismissed, and youth are dismissed also. excited tonight are you quiet or excited amen I still believe that God has many many awesome things in store for us this year amen so stay positive stay expectant amen and I believe that God is going to do some awesome awesome things amen in our midst well praise God we went a little bit over on our worship uh, time but when God moves you know, he takes priority over everything, but uh, we're still going get to get into the message tonight, amen? And so, uh, like you've heard me say before, every Wednesday is a surprise and a blessing uh, from all of our different speakers, and tonight is no different. Would you put your hands together as Sister Lavinia comes to share the word tonight, amen? <clears throat> it sounds like they know you. Now can you hear me? It's not like I need a lot of help, really. How is everyone tonight? Awesome. Are you ready for a really good word? Are you ready to be set free? Are you ready to find some reasons and some answers for the wise? Well, I'm here to help you do that. So praise God. Okay. Everyone here is a story yet to be told, right? Is your story over? Are, are you, you know, have you gone on home to the Lord yet? Then you still have some chapters left in your story, in your book. Right? Until we go home to Jesus, our story of life has not ended. It's being written daily. It's awaiting the time it can be told and shared. None of us, not one of us here, knows what our ending is. Only God does. Too often we think that we've messed up. I'm jumping right into this, right? Let me stop and pray. 
Father God, we just thank you for the night that you've given us. We thank you for every single moment of every single day that you've offered us. Father God, we just ask, I just ask that every word that proceeds from my mouth this night is of you. Holy Spirit, take over. Holy Spirit, have reign. Have just do what you need to do and say what you need to say. And Father God, I pray that every one of my brothers and sisters here this night, that the word goes deep into their very their very soul. Father God, that the healing that needs to take place takes place. Father God, we just thank you that you are ever present in our lives every single day. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we bow only to you, God. In Jesus' name. Okay, so jumping right into it. Too often we think we've messed up, right? We think we've done bad things. You know, we are in situations that we wish we couldn't, that we could get out of. We feel that we're never going to get where we want to go. Or we're never going to serve God as good as somebody next door or next sitting next to us or the pastor or anyone else, right? We think we're not going to make that. We think we're not going to achieve that. And we think that we're not going to be a good enough mother father, sibling, a co-worker, a husband, a wife, or anything in our relationships, right, with our mothers being a, uh, being a daughter or a son. We think sometimes that we can't do that, that we can't achieve that. You know what? All things are possible in Christ Jesus, all things. He didn't say some part of, kind of, sort of. He said all things. So I'm gonna stand on that three letter word, all. I'm gonna stand firm on that foundation and I'm gonna say that there is nothing that can't be accomplished if God ordains it in my life. Okay, so what do we do? How do we get there? Oh, what I do? Did I turn me off? Oh, no. There we go. Okay, so the first chapter of your book, of your life, your life did not begin at your birth. It began before the foundations of the earth. Ephesians 1, 4, and this is the message translation. I just love this translation because it, it goes deep. It says, how blessed is God and what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessings in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. That's you and me. That's all of us. He had us in mind. Had settled on us as the focus of his love. God's love. Perfect love. Unconditional love to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Christ Jesus. Oh, what pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Now, that's a long version. That's the message version. But it's true, isn't it? Isn't every part of that word that we just spoke every part of that scripture complete and true well of course it is it's in the bible it's true okay so why did i put this slide in there because so many times we think that we are that that we are stuck in who we were born to in the families we came from in maybe even the jobs you're in. We think we're stuck. We think we can't go farther. You know, my ministry is healing and deliverance. And we start with the inner healing portion first because if we can't get into that deep part of our soul that is so damaged in many cases, or even slightly damaged, but damaged, if we can't get the rust out of there, if we can't get those wounds healed, We'll never be able to walk forth and accomplish what God has asked us to do, right? Right. So what, that's what we start with. We start with inner healing. We go down and we, and we ask you questions and we, and we try to figure out. Hello. Okay. Through the Holy Spirit. 
We try to learn what's actually affecting you. Why is it affecting you? What part is down there that we haven't decided on, that we haven't seen, that we haven't really dealt with in our lives? That's what we do. And you're uncomfortable for a minute, but then you get over it, and then you get healed, and then you're fine, and you go, and you smile. So praise God. God is an infinite God, okay? That means he is never-ending. He says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. So it doesn't matter where you come from. <clears throat> Plans to give you the future you hope for. Again, the message, Jeremiah 29, 11. The thing that is nearest and dearest to my heart is to see every single one of you freed. Free, free, free to be who you are, free to be what you are, ordained to be, free to look in the mirror and say, I am the child of the most high God and I can accomplish anything. All things are possible. That's who I would love to see every one of you be. And every time I walk in a grocery store, I walk into my favorite store, Ross. Every time I walk into it, you know, I see people. I see men, women, and they're dragging. And I think, oh, God, let me go to them and let me tell them there's hope. You have hope. There is insurmountable hope in, in Christ Jesus. Insurmountable hope. Hope is what we look forward to every days of our lives, right? That's faith. That's believing in the things that we can't see, but knowing that God is going to accomplish it. Okay, that's my translation for the definition of hope. But that's what it is. You know, when I was growing up, I'll be really honest, I grew up with a silver spoon. I was born with a silver spoon. I was. I had a lot. We had everything. Material things were in abundance. I never had to ask more than once for something. I just got it. But it didn't didn't teach me what was really important. What was important was God. What was important was that I knew that God had a plan and a purpose for my life. What was important was that I needed to know that I could accomplish that plan and that purpose. And I'll be honest, it's taken many years for me to finally get to that place where I feel like I'm finally doing what God wants me to do, where, where God is opening the doors. The doors are slamming open right now for our ministry because we've realized there are so many hurting people. There are so many wounded souls. Okay, so what is your soul? Your soul is your mind, it is your will, and it is your emotions. Your spirit, if you are born again, is alive and perfect to Jesus, right? It's alive and perfect to Jesus. But your soul is the area where we make choices, we make decisions, where we allow things to come in and attach itself to us. It's when we look at something and we see, hmm, that looks really good, but we know we're not supposed to touch it or have it, and we go ahead and do it anyway. What does that do? That causes a soul injury, right? Because now we've done something we shouldn't do, and repentance needs to take place. But we don't always do that. We don't always repent. And I'm not here to tell you what a sinner you are. Lord knows I live in a glass house. I throw a rock, it's going to ricochet, and I'm going to shatter to pieces. I mean, I make mistakes every single day, and it's true. It's true, I do. And so I'm not, I'm not judging any of you. What I am judging is our enemy, Satan, because he has had right into your lives that I would really, <laughs> with such a deep part of me, want to see you healed from. So tonight what I wanted to do was that's kind of laying my foundation what I really want to do is start explaining at least the surface portion of what it is that we need to do to get to that point where we can finally be rid of all these soul injuries. Okay, that's what I want. John 10, 28 says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. I'm, I've said this before. I'm engraved in the very hand of God. I'm tattooed in and he can't come out. 
Okay? Now, you've ever tried to get rid of a tattoo? Yeah, it leaves scars. <laughs> you really don't ever get rid of it. Once you put it in there, it's in. We are embedded in the hand of God. No one can take us out. So we can't be blaming our ex-spouses. We can't be blaming our children. We can't be blaming the, the guy down the street. We can't be blaming somebody who disagrees with me or challenges me. We can't be blaming anybody because he can't take his out of the hand of God. She, he, they can't. That's where you belong. That's where you are. Once you understand that, you understand the hope in your life. You understand that there is so much victory because if I'm embedded in the hand of God, that means I'm one with him, right? Amen. Okay, so now we have these soul injuries. Now we have these things going on. Now we're struggling. What went wrong? What went wrong? What happened? By the way, that's my emoji. Can you see? This? <laughs> Why can't I seem to get ahead? Why am I sick in body and tormented in mind? Why am I lonely? Why? 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 How many of you have lied in bed at night or been driving somewhere and asking, God, why? Why is this continuing to happen to me? Why is life just repeating itself? Why? What am I doing wrong? Or it's their fault. If they wouldn't have said that about me, I wouldn't be hurting right now. Or, you know, any, any number of reasons for the why. Why, 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 why? Hmm. Let's go further. Let's find out. Ah, oh, what I do. Okay. So what we deal with are soul ties, ungodly soul ties, the injuries of the soul. Okay, so what is the injury of a soul? It can happen in the inner healing and deliverance ministry. We deal with soul injuries and ungodly soul ties. This is the area that the enemy obtains his legal right into your life because we, me, I, give him permission. How many have ever been to court or, or, or even sat in a courtroom? Okay, so you know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, I, I've only sat and watched. <laughs> so you know that there is a prosecutor, somebody prosecuting you, right? Okay, that's your tormentor, right? They're tormenting you. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? How am I going to get out of this? What's going to happen in the court? What's the verdict going to be, right? And then you have your attorney. And I'm not really sure what they call that, but your attorney. Your defense, right? Your defense. So now you have your defense, and they're sitting right next to you. And you have the judge who makes that final choice and decision about what's going to happen to your life. Okay, <clears throat> well, let me tell you why you're sitting in that courtroom in many cases. Did you take an offense? Maybe sometime, I don't know, as I was writing this, I was thinking about when I was in fifth grade. Okay, I'm, if anyone knows me, that you all know I'm very transparent. I just say it like it is. When I was in fifth grade, I had a teacher. His name was Mr. Sands. I will never forget him. I was a pretty cool little kid until I hit Mr. Sands, until I hit his class. It was the first day of school. He was asking everybody, so what do you want to be called? My name is Lavinia, but I grew up with the nickname Lovey, which, by the way, I hated until about 15 years ago. So, but that's what I knew myself to be was lovey. So when he asked, what do you want to be called? I said, lovey. And he said, oh, everyone look, chubby lovey. Okay. Let me tell you, soul injury, like immediately went in like a vein of death. Because I never forgot. Well, when I was getting ready for tonight, I was once again reminded of that man. It was, it was an offense that I held since the time I was in fifth grade. And I'm a senior citizen, so you know that's been a while. 
I hadn't, I thought I had dealt with that. I thought I had thought about him and said, ah, he was just dumb and young. You know, he wasn't, maybe he was, but for me, I didn't need to take that on. Because I was, even as a child, I'll admit it, I, I'm, I've always had a lot of friends. People liked me. And when he said that, I no longer could see myself as somebody who was likable. My grades dived. I never took an interest in school after that. I went to a very, very small Catholic high school, and I graduated third from the bottom of the class. It was still a C average, but it was still third from the bottom of the class. I never took an interest. I went to college, and I met a man who was the financial aid director who Later, many years later, I found out that he was a Christian. And while we were at a tea, he saw me and he walked over and he says, you need to go to college. And I said, no, I don't want to go to college. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. That one comment that that man made in fifth grade, that's what I heard him say. You're fat and you're stupid. It carried through my life. Well, I ended up going to college, being successful in college and doing a lot of things. It started a process of seeing myself as, as capable not worthy, capable. So why am I telling you the story? Because very early this morning, and about actually it was 6.06 this morning, I was remembering Mr. Sands, and God said, you haven't dealt with that. You didn't ever really deal with that. So I said, but God, okay, so let's walk through the process. The process was there was a soul tie. I believed him. I took on what he said as a truth, and I believed him. And so I embraced a lie as a truth. And so I needed to cut that string off. It felt more like it was an umbilical cord. It was so, it was so tough to get through this morning. I had to cut that soul tie off because what happened was I agreed with him with what he said, which tied him to me for all these years. So I went back in last night, early this morning, and I cut that soul tie. And I, I, am I going to see a change? I'm already seeing it. God immediately started showing me some things. I went, wow, how come I never saw this before? And of course, God, you know, uh, soul tie? Didn't you just break it? Yeah, I did. So why am I telling you all of this? Okay, that is the legal right that I gave the enemy to tie me to destruction. Okay, do you have un, un, unresolved anger? How many get, um, you don't need to raise your hands. How many get so mad that they lose control? How many get so angry that they stew in that anger for hours and sometimes days and weeks? How many do that? That's unresolved. Who are you angry at? Let's look at that. Search yourself out. Search your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. Who are you angry with? Okay, I can go back. I was angry with him. I was angry with my mother. I was angry with my sister. I was angry with a whole lot of people. But I would not have ever said that because I was nice living. You know, I always smiled and laughed a lot. What a lie. What a lie. Because I did have unresolved anger. And through the process of of this ministry and, and my working in healing for many years that we've, I've been able to get to the pinpoint of that anger and resolve it and forgive. Because you know what? Who was I hurting? Right, right. But how many times have we heard that and just said, oh, yeah, it was myself. No, you really did hurt yourself because now your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions is being trapped inside of that unresolved anger and unforgiveness. It's trapped. We need to get out of it. We need to stop doing it. So much easier said than done. So much. We, we get, we have... Soul injuries through things like unforgiveness, bitterness, promiscuity, alcohol, drugs, playing in witchcraft, broken relationships. Hey, I hung on to my ex-husband for so long because I wanted to hate him enough to hurt him. 
He didn't even know I was existing anymore. Okay, so who was I hurting? Me. Me. You have to let go of those broken relationships. You have to break the ties to those broken relationships. Because you're not hurting them. I think that's the lie. We think that we're, we're going to hurt them if we don't like them. They don't care. They don't care. They could care less. In fact, one of my children told me, it's been about a year ago, but he said, Dad just thinks it's so cool that you're still mad at him after 26 years. I am so not mad at him, which tells me he's got a soul tie, right? So I, had a, I broke that off. Oh, no, I don't want any part of that anymore. Broke that off. So he's got the soul tie. He still thinks I want, I, I, I'm angry with him. I'm not. I pray for his salvation. I pray for his eternity. Eternity is a really long time. I don't want to see this man, the father of my children, in hell for eternity. Actually, it's infinity. It never ends. Eternity has a beginning and an end. Infinity has no end. I don't want to see him spend that time in hell. So I pray for him now. And God blesses me. Could you pray for your enemies or those who think they're your enemy? Okay? All right. Um, it can be... It, okay, this is a biggie. And men are just as guilty as women, so just let me lay that out right now. Gossip. Why does that create bad soul ties? Because now I'm placing myself in agreement with somebody else's negative thoughts and intents of someone else. So now I've taken that in. I've taken hate. I've taken anger. I've taken unforgiveness. I'm taking on something else that somebody else said because I have now placed myself in covenant, which is an agreement, with that person gossiping. A few years ago, I got caught it's been quite a few years. I got caught in a church where I was the worst part of the gossip. I did not like that pastor's wife to save my soul. She didn't like me either. So I thought it was okay to badmouth her. You know, transparency. I cannot help you in, in deliverance and in healing if I can't be transparent for you. I did not like this woman, and there were several people who didn't, so we got together on a regular basis, and we bashed this woman to pieces. So what did I do? I put that in me. So what happened the next church I went to? I didn't trust anybody because I decided that that woman was my enemy. Therefore, I had put myself in agreement with the stink of gossip, with the stink of judgment, with the stink of just tearing another human being apart. Do we have the right to do that? No. So what happens when we don't have the right? We give Satan the right to come into our souls, injure us. Remember, our mind, our will, and our emotions. That is the place that you do have the control over should you choose to take the responsibility and ownership for that. Okay? Now... I know this is a heavy message, and I really fought giving it. God, I want to talk about really cool things. I want to talk about how beautiful all my brothers and sisters are and how much I love them. And went, no, the beauty comes from the healing. So talk it out. So here I am. I've often heard pastors say, I really didn't want to give this. God, did I really have to give this message? God said, well, if you want to be obedient... Okay, end of, uh, end of conversation. Okay. It can come from an overt sense of obligation, soul wounds. Okay, when I got a divorce, I decided that my children were so injured that I was going to save them. I was not going to save them spiritually. I was going to save them emotionally. And by George, there was nobody going to touch my kids. Who did I think I was? My job is to pray, to nurture, to uplift, and to edify my children, to lead them in the way of God. And that meant walking in the faith, 
trusting God, building them up, teaching them what it was they were supposed to do to walk that faith walk. It wasn't my job to be their faith. Consequently, I suffered the consequences of that. I had a broken relationship with both of my sons for a long time. Once I figured out that it was my fault, ownership, I cut those ties. I said, no more. I cut those soul ties, those ungodly soul ties between me and my sons. And Father God, I just thank you that you are going to restore a relationship that is based in the word of God with true love, with unconditional caring and loving. And you know, he's restoring. It's, it's, it's been an amazing adventure to see God heal. Not only my children's soul wounds because I helped put them on them, but mine. Okay. <clears throat> what about your spouse? Protect your spouse. I'm a mama bear. Anyone who knows me knows I'm the perpetual mother and grandmother. I have to fight not to protect those who I truly love, my husband included. Somebody says something about him, I want to go down their throat. Soul ties, soul ties, unhealthy soul ties, because my husband is an adult man who is also a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and he can handle his own, right? He can go before God, before the very throne of God, and he can ask for forgiveness for himself, and he can... Seek God out so that he can be set free in whatever situation he's in. A little over a year ago, he was working at a company, and there was a gentleman there who was manifesting true demons. I mean, it was so ugly. This thing was so demonically, horribly ugly. He would come home so upset and downtrodden and exhausted and beaten up emotionally. You have no, I don't know about the rest of you, but I talked to God a lot in the shower. In that shower, that man had blood everywhere. I wanted to take him out. I wanted to send, send emails to the boss. I wanted to go. I wanted, oh my goodness. My heart got so blackened by what this man was doing to my husband. Till one day in the shower, God said, what are you doing? Get out of the way. Don't you know that I love this man who's manifesting that I want him in my kingdom? Stop judging him. Start praying for him. Break that soul tie. And what was a soul tie? My decision that he should perish. Dark and ugly, isn't it? I broke it. And then a few weeks ago, Ben went to go. He had to talk to his old boss. And the guy was just as nice as he could be to Ben. How are you, dude? What's going on? Good to see you. It's like, okay, God, I'll stop doing that. I'll stop doing that. Ben can handle his own. That doesn't mean I'm not his wife. Doesn't mean I don't come upside him. Doesn't mean I don't support him. But that's got to be a godly way. Anything less than that is an ungodly soul tie. Okay? And it creates a wounded spirit a wounded soul, not only myself, but in Ben, because now I was standing in front. He's my priest of the household. It wasn't my place to stand there and protect him. But boy, did I buy into that one. And I started praying for this man. And that's what I do every day. Because I realized that he is such an injured man that he needs salvation. So I'm holding God accountable to the salvation of this man. And I mean that in a reverent way. But I am holding him. Um, and that all comes to taking on the role that God did not ordain for me to have. Okay, we don't want to take on those roles. <clears throat> You remember, okay, I am not speaking about the godly soul ties. You're, if you're married, you're supposed to have ties. You're supposed to have a godliness, a oneness. We went to the marriage class last night, and I, I love what, what, what um, they were saying last night. They were saying that Alan said, we need to be one in, how did you say it? We're intimacy, into me, into you. Intimacy, 
That's what we're supposed to be in our marriages. So that's healthy. We have a covenant with God. That's a tie. That's healthy. I birthed my sons. You bet I want a healthy relationship with them. They're my sons. I didn't go through labor for nothing. <laughs> but it's got to be godly. And now when my sons call and they ask for a counsel, I give wise counsel, not judgmental counsel. I do not tell them, well, you need to do this. No. Well, let's see what's going on. Where did the events take place? Why did this happen? Let's pray about this, son. Let's break this off of you. You don't need this on you. What an amazing miracle God is doing. But, you know, I know I'm talking a lot about me because, again, transparency is important to me. But this pertains to every single one of you sitting in these chairs. My story is just my circumstance, but the story is the same straight across. Unhealthy soul ties. <clears throat> God wants us to have that healthy relationship, and he wants us to have healthy life experiences. Okay? You might find it in your places of obsession, constantly replaying a scenario. How to recognize some of this is how, are you constantly playing a scenario in your mind? Well, I, if they're going to do this, then I'm going to tell them that. If he comes home like that again, well, I'm going to take care of that business. Constantly, constantly playing these scenarios in your head. What does that do? I used to do that. And Ben would walk in the door and I'd be so mad at him. And he'd had a tough day and didn't know what he did. And the truth was he didn't do anything. My head did. I was playing an argument that we had probably a year ago. I'm exaggerating. But we probably, I probably was playing something obsessively in my mind that he said or he did. Because I wanted to change him to make me happy. Unhealthy soul tie. Remember when I began, the first thing I said was, your spirit is alive. It is pure and it belongs to Jesus if you are born again. So if you're not born again, let's get you born again. Okay? Let's get your, you saved for eternity. Infinity. Let's get that taken care of so God has full access to your life. Anybody in here need? Full access to God? Salvation? You need salvation? Amen. Come on up. Let's let God do this. Praise God. Do we want somebody? Okay. I didn't expect that. Praise God. A new brother. We have a new sibling. We have a new sibling into the body of Christ. Amen. Phew. Okay. What I'm saying is our mind, will, and emotions and our heart, our soul, it's our heart that gets broken, right? We, but it is our soul. We call it our soul, but it's really your heart. It gets broken in a lot of pieces. The soul injury, we band-aid it. We put a patch on it. We tie ourselves to something. Doesn't do us any good. Doesn't give God the freedom to move in your life the way that you want him to. Because you're hanging on and hanging on to things that you don't need. They're not yours. They're not yours. They don't belong to you. Satan put them on you, and, but you bought it. You paid the cash, and you took it. 
But you know what the really incredible thing about God is? We can do refunds. I'm the refund queen, okay? If I don't like something, I'll take it back and refund it. You can refund that. You can give it back. Because the enemy doesn't have a legal right once you, once you ask him. Once you, once you get your, your soul healed. Once you do forgiveness. Oh, Ephesians 6.12 says, to, we need to remember this. Wrong slide. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We've all heard that. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who we fight with. I don't need to fight with my husband. I don't need to fight with my kids or somebody in church or when I worked uh, somebody I worked with, we don't need to fight with anybody because we're not fighting them. If we can get that revelation concept, we will understand that we are not fighting a human being. We are fighting the spirit realm. The war is there and you have access to the angels. You have access to the blood of Jesus. You have access to the name of Jesus, the most powerful name because every demon must bow at the name of Jesus. That's your right. That's your ownership. When you give back the refund, that's what you get. You not only get what you paid into it, you get back multiple. God gives you back the interest because you have the right to it. Use it. Utilize it. Embrace it. Take hold of it. And if you don't have that revelation, pray, God, I want the revelation of what your name means, what your blood did for me. I challenge you, each one of you, if you haven't done that, do it. God will show you. Trust me, he will show up and he will show what he did with his son for you. Amen. Says, I can't promise by anything other than the name of Jesus. Well, I promise in the name of Jesus. That's what will happen to you. Take it back. Refund that puppy. Well, I don't really mean puppy. I have a new puppy. <laughs> and I love my puppy. Hebrews 12, 15. It says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby, thereby many be defiled. Accountability comes in the area what we choose to do with the memories and how we view or think of them. And a memory is five minutes ago, as far back as to the day you were born. Memories started a second ago. So up to the memory. The one who desires forgiveness for God must first forgive his fellow man. Because we do not fight against flesh and blood. Resentment and an unforgiving spirit are two of the commonest hindrances of deliverance. If you want to hang on to that, then you really don't want freedom. That's a harsh thing to say, but it's true. Because, you know, it's a sacrifice. It hurts to let go. It hurts to say, I forgive them. It hurts to get rid of the root of bitterness. It hurts. Because why? Because now I have to look at me. I didn't do it. They did it to me. Well, yeah, they did. But you own it. You took it on. You embraced it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Wherever bitterness has poisoned the heart, the soul, it must be totally not a remnant not a speck of it left for just in case one day when they say something again it must be totally removed so that not even a root of it is left my husband is a tree trimmer and he talks about getting rid of the roots and I, I, I watched him do it one day and it was just amazing it was this machine that went around and there was sawdust everywhere and there were these things flying all over the place and I had to stand back because I didn't want to get hit by it and the Lord showed me that's the remnant 
of what we hang on to. So am I going to go over to that stump? Am I going to pick up that little piece that was left, put it in my pocket and keep it? for just in case that root comes back, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with that little piece? So you're, unless you want to graft it back into another tree. No, I didn't think so. Me either. So there are, very, there are many, many voices we hear every day. We hear voices from television, from the radio, our phones, because we are all constantly on our phones. Our families, our co-workers, on and on. In healing and deliverance, we understand that the first thing that needs to be done is taking accountability for our actions. I'm recapping. We need to take accountability for our actions and what we have allowed into our lives. The accountability comes in the area of what we chose to do with the memories or the circumstance or the person or the word or whatever and how we view or think on them. There are things that have to be done to us. There are, there are many, 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 many things that have been done to us in our lifetime. Some very heinous, some horrible things that you didn't have control of, maybe as a child. You know, maybe you got hit and didn't expect it. You know, it, it could be almost anything. Betrayals, abuse, words spoken against you. The second step we lead you in is the area of forgiveness. And I've already talked about that inner healing, recognizing our accountability to it. And forgiveness keeps you in bondage. Without forgiveness, no room is left for God to reconcile you to him so forgiveness can heal. That was a word that I got today for everybody. And it, I, I cried. I cried. I thought, oh, God, if I don't get anything through tonight, let me get this through. Unforgiveness keeps you in bondage. Without forgiveness, no room, because it fills the room, is left for God to reconcile you to him so that forgiveness can completely heal you so you can finally be free and walk out of that courtroom justified by the blood once we've helped you walk through forgiveness we take you through cutting the ungodly soul ties that's what we do in our ministry severing them, helping you learn how to sever them from yourself so your mind, will, and emotions can find the freedom God has intended for you. What did we say? What did we say? God had a plan and a purpose for each and every one of you. Remember, you are a story yet to be told. Your last chapter has not been written. And God's perfect will is yours to grab hold of and live out. It is your choice. 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 Make a choice. And you know, you've heard that it ain't over to the fat lady sings. Well, it ain't over to that last trumpet sounds. And the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ comes to get you. So you have all the time until that moment to make these choices for your life. I hope tonight that I was able to stir you up because I really enjoy doing that anyway. Those who know me know I can be pretty ornery when I need to be. My team tells me that I have the least filters of all of them. I just say it like it is. So I'm hoping I stirred you. I'm hoping that I challenged you. Okay. I shared this tonight. I'm going to share it now. I just feel like the Lord wants me to. In the year 2018 was a year of growth. How many of you grew and grew and grew last year? So much growth happened in your lives, right? Well, when I was getting, when I was praying for the new year, I said, God, what are we looking forward to? Because I don't want to hear all the major, all the multiple prophecies and all of this and that. I just want to know what you're saying. Talk to my heart. Talk to my soul. Talk to me and tell me what I need to look forward to. What do I need to prepare for? Where do I need to pray? What do I need to stand firm? Because I'm telling you, when I make a choice to stand, you are not going to move me. God said the year of 2019 is going to be the year of great challenge. Because you grew. You grew last year. You matured. You got wiser. 
You have more word in you. You got stronger in Jesus. So now that that's all happened, the year of challenges upon us. So we're going to face those challenges with the information and the growth that we've already been given. Because that's how God works. He gives you one step at a time. He moves you forward until you achieve what he has asked us to achieve. So the year 2019 is going to bring great challenge. I don't know about you, but in mine and Ben's life, it has already begun. But with every single challenge met, what happens? Blessings. Blessings. We always want to hear the good stuff. I wasn't able to give a really, really cutesy <laughs> kind of sermon tonight. But I can, I can end it with good and with joy and with hope and fulfillment. Okay? Meet the challenge. Don't take on any more soul wounds. Clean them out. Move on in the year. Meet those challenges. Receive those blessings. My blessing this year, the biggest blessing that I have seen, are the lives that God has allowed our team to touch. And the freedom, the freedom that we are seeing is just immense. People who walked in with their heads down are now walking into the church with their heads up and they're smiling. They've been set free. They're not hurting anymore. Their physical bodies are getting healed. That's the blessing. Not what God can you do for me, but God, what are you going to use me in? How much more can I be used? Use me. We all need to be able to say that. I love each and every one of you. I love my church family more than any of you can know. I love my church family. You are all so special. And I do see a lot of hurt. And I do see a lot of pain. And I do see a lot of things. And I pray for you every day, every day, that God would lead you in a path of healing through forgiveness, through, through caring, through the word of God. Seep yourself in his word because it is in his word that you are going to find your truth that will lead you to the path of success. Get in prayer. How do you know God's voice if you don't talk to him? Hear his voice. Okay, I could stay here for hours. So... I just praise God for every one of you, and thank you. Come on and give the Lord another praise offering. You know, um, out of everything that Lavinia shared tonight, just one thing really, really stood out to me. Why are we the way that we are? How many of you know you don't ask yourself that question about the good things that are happening in your life? It's the bad things that we ask, why did I do what I did? Why am I the way that I am? And that might be when your anger's up or when you're saying something or doing something that you know you shouldn't do. Well, it got there somehow. It got rooted in. And how many of you know we have a lot of baggage? Come on. How many of you know I'm not the only one that has baggage? We all have baggage. And God is helping us to work through those. You are a work in progress. And, uh, and it's going to take a lifetime to do what God needs to do in you. Amen? So would you stand and we're going to pray. We're going to dismiss you tonight. Don't forget we're continuing our series on Sundays on financial freedom, journey to financial freedom. Uh, so we are going to continue that uh, this coming Sunday. Invite somebody out, amen? Uh, have some interesting things that we want to share with you in that series, amen? Lift your hands as we pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we need to get rid of these things in our lives, the roots, the hurts, the soul ties, and the baggage that holds us back, Lord. Your word says that we need to remove the things that so easily beset us. So, Lord, help us to know what those are. Lord, reveal them to us and let us receive healing in our lives, Father. That, Lord, we can glorify you, that we can work and be blessed 
in your kingdom, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. Good night. If we have any folks out there that are seamstress or, or can sew, please let me know. Um, if you can do that, we need some help with some projects. Amen.